What is up guys, JVR Tech here, the Puerto Rican, living in Japan, talking about tech, photography, videography. Uh, welcome to the channel. And this is a continuation of a problem I've been having with my MacBook Pro, you see back there. Now I have used different various docking stations. I was comparing between two brands, they're completely different. One expensive and the other one was a cheaper one. Both work the same. Some of the drives would just eject suddenly and uh, causing problems with the SSDs, as well as the ethernet will at times disconnect uh, or the monitor itself. And I don't know how that works, why that happens. It's supposed to be a Thunderbolt 4. So I thought it should be able to handle HDMI, ethernet, and just a few peripherals and both docking stations had this exact same problem recently i ended up purchasing the anchor prime the 14 in one i don't remember the code name so i'm just gonna post it on the screen and uh yeah so far so good first impressions is when i pulled that thing out of the box i first thing i thought is this thing is heavy it's very solid it feels like a brick i'm talking about it's pure metal and that gave me a little bit of confidence that the cooling was going to help with performance. And since literally that is a power supply slash docking station or slash hub, there are a bunch of ports there. And I want to talk to you about some of the things that a lot of reviewers forget to mention when they're talking about this Anchor Prime docking station. So let's just get the spoiler out of the way. This thing works fantastic. It's running right now, pouring, powering my MacBook Pro as well as the monitor, the camera, the speakers, the microphone, and I even put an external drive, and of course, ethernet too. Everything is connected, but the thing that this thing has going that no other docking station has is that it works as a charging station. So there are three charging IQ fast charge stations on the front that they all in total can output up to 160 watts, I believe it is, which is plenty of power to charge two or three things at the same time and next to that are three exact same port two usb-c and one usb-a they're all three are 10 gigabit speeds so again they're great for charging and transferring data i get the usual speeds of 400 to 500 that depends on the external drive i haven't tested an nvme drive yet but i did test just a regular ssd and i get that normal speeds i get on set a cable i love the the small screen on the top it shows how much wattage your computer is using at the time it shows you how many things are connected and what is using power really cool little display and if you don't like it if you're going to watch a movie or something and you don't want that light annoying you if you hold down that button on the top, it's going to turn off that screen. So it's really nice that they gave us that option. Now, the things that not a lot of people talk about is the three ports in the back, the three USB-A ports, even though they're labeled at 480 gigabytes per second, that is really not a lot. We're talking about good old days USB 2 speeds. There is not good for external drive. You're going to average about 30 megabytes per second. And also, it's not great for powering hefty tablets such as an iPad Pro. So that is one of the things that not a lot of people talk about is that the ports in the back are not powerful at all. I tried connecting my Camlink 4K camera and it won't even recognize it. It will just have a green screen. So I have to connect it to the front ports and then I will get the 4K connection. Now, if I do lower my camera, my Sony a7S to 1080p, then the back ports will see it, but it will be just so stuttery. It's not fluid at all. So that just shows that the connection on the back ports are just really designed for just simple things as a keyboard and a mouse, maybe speakers, and that's it. So that's pretty much it. The good news is it is working as it is labeled and so far so good so hopefully time it will continue that way as time will tell but the great thing is that yeah like i said you could charge other things so that eliminates having so many of the charging dongles that i have laying around i have so many of those laying everywhere now but now they're gonna be useless since this docking station can actually power everything if there was something that i would change on this docking station would be to put at least one or maybe two of those fast data transfer ports on the back just in case if you want to have an ssd out there or maybe like a time machine backup storage drive that you don't want to have it outside visibly like you could see my drives are 
just sitting there under the MacBook stand. So if you like neatness, this might not be the solution for you guys because you're going to see all the cables on the front. But then again, this is what this thing was designed for. It was not also to transfer data, but also to charge things. So that's why I can see why they will have all the fast ports on the front because you're going to be in and out constantly. So you can't have it all right. But anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful for anyone interested in the item. I'm going to put it in the description. If you're interested, check it out. But thank you guys so much for your time and for watching. And I hope to see you guys in a future video. Peace.